<laughs> we'll hear from the sun. Good morning, David. Um, morning. You deck-wise, obviously, left in the week. Where are you at the moment on uh, appointing the new captain and how that process works? Not, not that much further forward. It's only just happened uh, a day or so ago, so we'll get time to think about it. So, no further forward at the moment, no. Will that be decided among the players or...? No, the no, it'll be decided from, from myself. Michelle Escobar from Ofta Sport. I'm going to kick off the Ange questions. Uh, obviously, you know what it's like to have a lot of pressure in the Premier League. What advice would you give to Ange to deal with this sort of pressure as a newcomer? He'll never get more pressure than he did managing Celtic Football Club. Celtic Football Club are probably the third or fourth best supported club in the world. And if you manage Celtic Football Club, you're, you're used to pressure. So he'll have no problem. Um, David, obviously you're now going into the market when you've got that Declan Rice money. Do you think it will be more difficult with clubs knowing you've got that amount in terms of negotiations for players? I have no idea. You know, we're, we'll find out in time, but I couldn't really give you an answer to that at the moment. No, we couldn't be sure. And it was a report at the end of last season you held talks with the owners about staying at the club. I don't know if you give any insight to that and what was it that made you you want to say no, I, I, I'm used to having lots of talks with the, with the owner. I speak to him most days, so uh, it was nothing special. Any talks at the end of the season, so I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have put the sort of titles you're suggesting there alongside it. David McAmino from Keep Up. Um, you mentioned your eagerness before the the Perth game to to meet up with Ange once again after the, the times that you met along the way, and you did get to do that yesterday, and it looked like you shared a. a Decent conversation. What was the sort of um, message that, that you expressed to him, and, and what were the sort of words that were shared between the two? Of you? I was talking about how much did he enjoy Glasgow because I'm from Glasgow and he had to live there uh, for an Aussie. And uh, I was talking about him moving to London and you know had he settled, had he found a home yet, etc. So. Uh, I was fortunate enough to play against them in Melbourne when I was at, with Manchester United here a long time ago. And uh, we played Celtic oh, a couple of years ago in a pre-season friendly, so I came across them then as well. So so it was good to catch up with them yesterday. And did he have good things to say about Glasgow? Oh, great things about Glasgow. You should all think about going. <laughs> <laughs> Gail? When we spoke to you a few days ago, you, you said that Rice was irreplaceable. So, what do you hope West Ham looks like this season? How do you go about coming, going for a different way of playing or looking at what players you can bring in to replace him without replacing him? Players come and go from all clubs, so not just their club. I've had it before in the past as well. So, you move on, you find a new way of, of uh, preparing, getting things done. And we will do, but as I said, he's only just gone. Today's Monday, he's only just gone on Saturday, so uh, it's very quick since it's happened, really. You said about you being the man that decides who captains. What are the qualities you look like, you look for in captains, and maybe some of the best that you played under, or actually, are you one of these that is not sold on how important a captain is in a football team? I think a captain's hugely important. Uh, I've had some great boys who've who've captained my teams over the years. Mark Noble was exceptional for West Ham. Phil Neville was exceptional for for Everton for me. Uh, Declan was great in the in the short period he was captain here at West Ham. So we'll look closely to see what we think is the right choice, and uh, we've got a bit of time before the season starts before we need to make a decision on that. A couple of questions for Angela as well. Um, sorry, one more for David. If okay. you don't mind. Uh, David, you talking about captaincy there. Harry Maguire's had the captaincy taken off of him at Manchester United. Obviously, quite a big decision for Eric Ten Hag to make. Reports and suggestions that um, Maguire's a player that West Ham may be interested in. Is he the sort of player and can, that you would like? And can you tell us anything or give us any insight into that? Well, I couldn't tell you anything because I think if talking about players from other clubs who are under contracts, that's not the right thing to do. So I'd never do that. Uh, and I've got no idea their reasons at Manchester United for, for what they've done. So uh, so I couldn't talk about them, no, I'm sorry. Angela, you've just signed uh, an extension to your contract. Do you hope to finish your playing career with West Ham or are you looking to return home to finish your career? 
so I'm just I'm just glad to to sign like a new contract with the with the club and uh, I'm looking forward for this season. I'm just enjoying my my time with here and West Ham. This is the most important. Yep. I'm Jess Brown from Ten News. Angela, um, can Hi. you just tell us how you're enjoying Perth and, and what you guys have been up to while you've been here off the field? No, we 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 totally enjoy. It. We struggle a little bit for the jet lag, but I think everyone struggle for that. And I think we we had like a, a couple of days where we train all together, and then uh, we had the games where we I think we play a little bit uh, a little bit better and, and well. Uh, we looking forward for the next game. Yeah. And what sorry, just what about off the field? Have you been able to see? See the sights of Perth, or yeah, yeah, yeah. We we spend a couple of, a couple of hours together uh, just to explore this this new city. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, we like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jake Rosengarten from Kiva. Angela, I'd love to know. Um, do you have any memories of? I mean, have you played with any Australians over the years? And who who your favourite Australian footballer is? Australia footballer is uh, uh, Kiwi. Yeah, thank you. I think. Yep. Yeah, Angelo, obviously you played um, Perth the other day, a very um, young team, especially in the second half when you were playing against them. Were there any particular opponents that, that you found really impressed you or quite difficult to match up against? Yeah, our team, even our team was young, so I think he's, uh, we, all the young lads, I, I think they, they showed themselves. I think uh, it was a good team, a good test. Like uh, we just uh, early days. I think we are pre-season, so uh, I don't know. The man just to say if we if we did really well. I don't know. Hansha, James, get up your times. Hi. When I play, like Declan Rice leaves football club, there's always a lot of talk about who will be the targets, who will be the players brought in to replace them, but. Is it also the case that the players who are already in the squad have to step up to kind of fill that hole that he leaves and replace some of that, that leadership and the contribution that he brought to the team? Uh, um, uh, talking about Dak, like uh, uh, we we saw Dak like growing up from the academy, and uh, everyone is uh, really pleased with him and uh, for what he's done. I think uh, all the players already step up, and, uh, and uh, like uh, the man just said, uh, Mark Noble was really good as a captain, and then Declan he did his best as well. I, I think uh, whoever is gonna get in that position uh, will do the best to to get something important for the club. Yeah. Dave, can I ask you please? What, what do you expect from the team at each be? Into the club, what do you expect to see from him? Well, I've seen what I have to see from 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 West Ham point of view. We had a great great boy who played great for West Ham. It's nothing to do with me now. It's to do with Deck and to do with with Arsenal. Any more? Yeah, a couple at the back. Uh, David Wayne from Cape Town. Uh, David, your longevity in the Premier League is extraordinary, um, and obviously, Ancelotti will be now beginning his tenure. Uh, without, you know, what's the secret to that longevity, or what's the, you know, what what do you put down your career to, to be in the league for so long? Down to uh, well, longevity is a, a really important thing, and sometimes it goes a wee bit underestimated. I think because we're we're so uh, concerned about winning and people winning all the time. But I'm really pleased that I've been able to uh, have as many games in the Premier League. But I've always said, if you don't love the game, if you don't love it with incredible passion and you know, embrace it, try to keep moving on, try to keep joining in. We, we've got so many good good coaches who have come to the Premier League over the years. Some incredibly big coaches move on quite quickly, don't, don't do the longevity, but come in and enhance the league. Uh, but we've also got a, a bunch of new young coaches about as well who are coming in. So it's uh, you've always got to keep moving on if you want to continue having longevity. So I'm really pleased I'm, I'm still going. Uh, I love the game greatly. I love watching it. I love playing. All the things to do with it. So that's one of the reasons why I think uh, longevity is with me, and uh, fortunate enough that I've been able to stay with it. And in that time, you've, it's now a while ago, but you did obviously coach Dean Cable. 
and being Australian roots, it's, it's, it's part of it. We've always loved to hear a little bit more about that. Um, do you reflect on your time with Tim and, and when you come to Australia, you know, did you hear from him about your upcoming trips and things like that? Uh, Tim came to see me uh, during the season last year at West Ham. He spent a couple of days. So Tim, Tim's uh, as you well know, is a great, great lad and was a great player for us. It was a, we signed him from Millwall uh, for Everton at the time, and he went on to be a, a you know really, really top, top player for us. Important as he was for Australia, he played so long for Australia, hugely important for them, and uh, you know was just a great lad to have and uh, still is and. You know, he's had an incredible career. You talk about longevity in, in football. You know, he's been in America, he's in Doha, he's you name it. He's uh, he finds places to go to him all over the place. So uh, played in all the, you know, I think it was in China, and I think he was out another place somewhere out here as well. So he said yeah, an incredible footballing career and continues to have it. David, uh, Vince Rigari from the City Morning Herald. You just mentioned uh, Tim Cahill. Socceroos are coming off their best World Cup performance ever. The other side of the country had here as well. They were about to host a, a co-host of Women's World Cup here too. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like the pipeline of Australian talent to Europe is reopened again. Not mm -hmm. big clubs or big leagues, but there's a few young players who have made some, some good steps recently. I'm just wondering what your observations are overall of Australia as a football nation. Mm -hmm. like, well, I think when uh, you know, when I think of Tim Cale and people like Lucas Neal would be the ones who come to mind uh, from from probably the era when I was uh, watching it a lot more, concerned with the leagues because I saw them both playing at Millwall over over years when I was in the, the lower leagues in England myself. Uh, so, I think that Australian football has developed. I actually think the country is ready probably to host a, a big tournament because I think that. You've certainly got the the facilities. The distance between the, the maybe here in Sydney or, or, or here in Melbourne is a, is a fair jaunt, for example. But you know, it wouldn't surprise me in the future that Australia will get a chance of hosting a World Cup, and I'm sure to come. I think a lot will be to do with how how well uh, the Women's World Cup goes just now, and how it's seen uh, throughout the rest of the rest of the world, and into FIFA probably more importantly how it's seen. But. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, there's maybe not as many Australian players getting mentioned, I don't think, at the moment. But that's partly because the levels of, certainly of our league in the Premier League, is, is incredibly high. Players coming in from all the, the best European leagues. And now we have the ability to bring players in from South America much easier than we were in the past as well. So it starts to squeeze. I see it a little bit with Scotland being a very small nation. It see, we see less Scottish players, for example, getting to, to play in the Premier League, mainly because of the quality of of the players coming in from so many different countries. So now you, you have to be right at the top if you want to play in the Premier League, for example. But uh, I still think that for a lot of the Australian players coming to, to Europe and maybe being in the Italian or the Spanish League, French League, uh, would be good for them. I don't want that to be in any way taken away from uh, the Australian League itself. But let's be fair, probably most of the better teams and, and all the top players are playing in Europe at the moment. Last couple then now. David, um, with jet lag both ways, and we're very grateful to see you, but do you think this Thank is you. the best way to prepare for a new Premier League campaign? Obviously, Angelo mentioned jet lag and that you're feeling now mm -hmm. it's going to get worse when you get home. Uh, is it a, a good way to prepare coming all the way to Australia? No, it's not. That's honestly telling you the truth, but it's great to be here because we are, we're thrilled we never get a chance to get this far around the world. We've talked about it before, about how lucky we are as players. I've now had a chance, and, and managers, I've now had a chance to be in Australia three times, and it may never have happened if I hadn't been involved in football. So it's a great, great for our players to get a chance to see a lot of the players were out yesterday. Uh, but if you want to talk solely about the football, no, it's not the best preparation, it wouldn't be. But I do think that the Premier League is so popular Asia is hugely popular with, with the Premier League, so is this part of the world. Everywhere you go, everybody wants to see the Premier League, and I think the chance to get up close uh, to the players we have, we've had a lot of supporters come to see us, we've met a lot of supporters, in, whether it be here in the, in the hotel, uh, watching the games. So I do think that it's part of your role as a football club, uh, certainly a Premier League club, is to sort of uh, put yourself around and show yourself, whether it be this side of the world or whether it be America side of the world, I think that it's important because the Premier League is viewed 
everywhere now. So, so big. Sorry, David, after the game with um, Perth the other day, I'm told you had your eye on some local talent. Do you, do you like what you saw? Uh, well, I, I'd, I'd said I'd tip off about one boy I should keep my eye on, and, and yeah, I'm not going to give his name out, that's for sure. But uh, but you know, we did, and, and uh, uh, yeah, we quite enjoyed what we saw. So it's, it was a young player, which you would expect. So we'll uh, we'll keep our eye on it, and I'll maybe pass his name on when we get back to to see if we could maybe get a chance to have a look at him maybe back home in England. And can you just let us know how you guys are enjoying it? I'm really enjoying it. You know, I was lucky I get uh, get a bit of golf yesterday morning with Ian. We had a chance to see a few kangaroos bouncing around the golf course and uh, chasing my balls in the, in the rough. That was a worry. I didn't know what, what else I was going to find in the rough. But uh, but overall, <laughs> overall we uh, look, we've really enjoyed it. Uh, we're in a really nice hotel and you know everybody, the people have been incredibly friendly. Amazing the amount of people from from the UK, whether it be you know England, Scotland, Ireland, in this part of the world, and uh, the biggest thing I've been surprised is that nobody wants to leave. Everybody's happy here, so that's telling me something that they're uh, they're enjoying it. I've had a chance to meet up with uh, some some players I played with when I was a player at Bristol City here, uh, who are out here now. So it's been great opportunity to meet people and. Uh, and more importantly, make sure that the West Ham supporters in this part of the world see that we're, we're the same as everybody else. One there and then one there and we'll finish up. Angelo, you're uh, one of the senior members of the squad now, and a few that lots of the West Ham fans on the ground here in Australia suggesting they'd like to see you as captain after Declan Rice's departure. Is, do you think you've got what it takes, and is that something that you would like to do if given the opportunity? No, it's not, it's not up to me. Like, uh, who is the captain? I think, uh, like in the dressing room, we have a lot of leader. Uh, I think the club knows what, what is the best. Uh, whoever is going to be in charge, he will do the best for for the club. I think. Okay, final one at the back now. David, just on Perth, how does this Perth compare to the Perth in Scotland? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, weather conditions are like uh, uh, <laughs> a big difference. I've got to say, yeah. Uh, look, we've we've really enjoyed Perth here, but Perth in Scotland is a nice place to go as well. Not too far from uh, St Andrews, the golf courses and Glen Eagles and all those places as well. So we, I certainly enjoy my golf courses up that part of the world. But uh, as I said earlier, it's a great experience for us all. It really is. Uh, and I've never been to Perth before, so it was it's great to come and see it. And uh, certainly, new city. Uh, or it feels like that to us anyway and traffic doesn't seem too bad and lots of good things about it I have to say. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.